Hi, I'm Mark from GUBOD Dev, and this is Rollin. It's been 45 days since the last quad face collision, and this is Droner School. Welcome to Droner School. This is Drone Basics 101, and this is the first video in our Droner School series. The first thing any good pilot needs is to understand his or her machine inside and out. Drones, or quad multi-rotor aircraft, are amazing examples of modern technology and made possible through the STEM disciplines. Quads are innately unstable platforms and only fly through brute force and high-tech engineering. In fact, if you want to build and fly drones at the highest level, you have to be a little bit of an engineer. To produce a high-performance drone, you need to be able to design your power system, solder your components, meter your motors, and thrust calibrate your quad, uh, customize its program, and that's just the beginning. But don't worry STEM warriors, there is a huge open source community out there to help you gain the knowledge and experience you need. We are going to give you the mathematics, physics, electrical, mechanical, and software engineering skills you need to master the drone arts. Also, along the way, we are going to introduce you to some of the great contributors of the open source community that provide a wealth of knowledge and tutorials just for the love of the hobby. Yeah, contributors like uh, Kebab FPV, uh, Joshua Bardwell, Oscar Liang, Mini Quad Flight, uh, Mini Quad Test Bench, uh, Blue Falcon, Flight Test, Rotor Ride, Electro Boom, AVG. Wait, do those last two have to do with drones? Ah, who cares? They're awesome. In fact, <laughs> the fact is, you don't need permission to learn the STEM disciplines and we are but a drop in an ocean of resources designed to get you the knowledge you want. Let's get started. Let's start by understanding how drones produce thrust, because only thrust makes them fly. Yeah, you'll hear me say often that there's no elegance to a drone. They are pure brute force. The first concept we need to understand is that motors don't produce the thrust, the props do. The flight controller sends a PWM signal, or a digital signal, to the electronic speed controller, or ESC, the PWM defines a duty cycle that controls how fast the MOSFETs turn on and off, which controls the switching of the polarity of the magnets in the motor. So the speed at which the motor magnet switch polarity controls the rotational speed of the motor. The props encounter drag from the air and will draw as much current as it needs to match the target rotational speed. However, that current must go through the ESC. So if the, if so if the motor actually draws more current than the ESC, can actually handle, it will burn. All right, so the rotational rate achieved by the motor spins the propeller. The propeller, the more drag the propeller encounters, the more current the motor draws to achieve the desired rotational speed, which is defined by the MOSFET switching. And the speed of the prop's rotation and the pitch of the prop define the amount of thrust produced. So let's take a look at the forces and structural dynamics that affect the drone's flight. Before discussing how the drone utilizes thrust, we should talk about the rotational force or torque produced by the spinning motors. Now, Newton's third law states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. The spinning motors produce a rotational force, torque, but an opposite force to whatever it is mounted to. So by applying a spinning force on the prop shaft in one direction, an opposing rotational force is applied to the drone frame. To mitigate this, two props will rotate in one direction and two will rotate in the other. As long as the sum of the rotational force in one direction equals rotational force in the other, the quad will remain in equilibrium, meaning it does not yaw or rotate. But if the rotational force in one direction overpowers the opposing rotational force, it will cause the drone to yaw in the direction of the weaker force or opposite of the stronger force. Here you see that two counterclockwise motors are producing more torque than the clockwise motors. Therefore, the counterclockwise motors produce an opposite clockwise torque and cause the drone to yaw in a clockwise rotation. On a mode two transmitter, yaw is controlled by left and right movement of the left stick. When you move the left stick left and right, the throttle to two motors spinning in one direction are increased, while the throttle to the two motors spinning in the opposite direction are decreased. This is what causes the drone to induce a flat yaw without losing altitude. A flat yaw is when the drone rotates around the z-axis or the vertical axis extending in both directions from the top and bottom of the drone. 
Next, let's consider thrust. Thrust is best understood as it counters the effect of gravity on the drone mass. Yeah, the effect of gravity on a drone's mass is weight. The lifting thrust produced by the props reaches equilibrium with the force of gravity when the lifting thrust from all four props is equal to the drone's weight. We might consider this a hover, but unfortunately this does not mean the drone is not drifting or traveling in level flight. It just means it's not losing altitude. To be sure, the drone may be tilted to the side and moving laterally, while still not losing altitude. Because the lifting thrust is still equal to the force of gravity, even though not all of the thrust is pure lifting thrust. We will cover the calculation of the lifting thrust in the next video. But wait, there's more. Indeed, if the thrust vector of each motor is directly opposing gravity, then 100% of thrust is lifting thrust. And if the total thrust is equal to gravity, then the quad is hovering. However, that doesn't mean each motor is putting out the same amount of thrust. That depends on the structural dynamics of the drone frame itself. We'll move on to structural dynamics in a second, but first let's make sure we know how to modulate our thrust. Moving a left stick up and down on a mode 2 transmitter applies thrust to each motor equally and is designed to increase and decrease altitude. Push the stick up to increase altitude and down to decrease altitude. Any minor inconsistency in the thrust produced by the four individual props will be handled by your flight controller by modulating individual motor speed to help stabilize your drone. Structural dynamics will have a major effect on your quad's flight characteristics. Note how much longer the two left arms are than the two right arms of this quad. The left motors have a mechanical advantage over the motors on the right arms, and therefore the motors on the right have a lot more work to do. This means our physics model is not yet complete. We also need to take into account the structural dynamics of this drone. In particular, we need to understand the moments of the arm. The moment of the arm takes into account the thrust produced by the prop and the mechanical advantage provided by the length of the arm. The moment of an individual arm is calculated by multiplying the thrust produced by the propeller by the length of the arm. So hovering or maintaining a constant altitude without lateral movement is not a matter of equilibrium of thrust, but an equilibrium of arm moments. However, we cannot consider moments in simple positive and negative values, like rotational forces, because a quad's equilibrium exists in three dimensions. When we consider thrust, we think of it trying to translate or move up and down in a z-axis in a straight path. However, each moment applies its force on the center of mass as an angular force, or torque, on the z-axis protruding from the center of the quad's frame. So we need to think of the arms as extending into four quadrants defined by X and Y axes. So each arm has an X component and a Y component. In this way, we can see how all positive X values must cancel out all negative X values and all positive Y values must cancel out all negative Y values in order for the four arm moments to reach equilibrium. If we want to move our drone, we must break this equilibrium by making the negative X values overcome the positive X value and vice versa to bank our drone right or left, and or by making the negative Y overcome the positive Y values and vice versa to pitch our drone forward or backward. The right stick on a mode two transmitter when turned from left to right increases the throttle to two motors. So either two motors on one side, we'll call them the X negative motors, or to two motors on the other side, we'll call them the X positive motors. And this will cause the drone to bank and move laterally. Moving the right stick up increases the throttle to the two motors in the back of the drone. Call them the negative Y motors. The negative Y motors will overpower the positive Y motors, causing the drone to pitch forward and move forward. Pull the right stick down. The positive Y motors will actually overpower the negative Y, causing the drone to pitch back and move backwards. All right, so let's put it all together. So T is throttle, and in general will be controlled by the up and down axis of the left stick for a mode 2 transmitter. However, the amount of throttle actually produced will be modulated by the flight controller in response to input from the transmitter. For instance, if you are rolling right, the flight controller will increase throttle to the left motors, M1 and M4, while simultaneously decreasing throttle to the right motors, M2 and M3. 
In order to calculate the thrust and or torque that must be produced by each motor in order to make the drone fly in a particular direction or maneuver, you must take into consideration the amount of pitch, roll, and yaw the maneuver requires. So let us say rolling right is a positive value and rolling left is a negative value. Pitching forward is a positive value and pitching backward is a negative value. And finally, let's say yawing right is a positive value and yawing left is a negative value. Then the equations above would determine the amount of thrust or torque each motor should produce. So flying quads is all about manipulating equilibriums between force, structure, and gravity. In the next video, we will reveal and discuss how drones are innately unstable and have complex flight dynamics. But an examination of the quad flight characteristic through the lens of the STEM disciplines will illuminate the incredibly odd, inelegant machine that is the quad rotor drone. And look out for our companion practicum videos where we discuss methods that put the science and engineering we cover in this video series to practical use to help you build better drones and be a better pilot faster. I'm Roland from GUBot Dev, and this is Mark, reminding you to support the open source community today. Click on an ad for your favorite video, donate to your favorite contributor, or upload your own video to teach others what you have learned. We all stand on the shoulders of giants. Now go fly. And if you're not crashing, you're not flying. <laughs>